Take your Bibles, if you would, with me this morning, and uh, let's turn to the book of Colossians. The book of Colossians, and we're going to turn to Colossians chapter 2. Now, I talk about, um, you know, this month of Thanksgiving. <clears throat> um, I, uh, you know, we celebrate one day, but I kind of like to focus the whole month on Thanksgiving. And uh, I just want you to know that I, I, I don't know, this year has been, um, seemed like a little, little bit more special to me personally, myself, of being thankful for what all that God has done for us. And to think about the things that I am thankful for. Amen? And uh, listen, that, that'll help you, is to uh, do what the uh, old song says that we sang, the old hymn, Count Your Many Blessings. Amen? It's good for us to stop and count our blessings. It's easy for us to stop and count the problems. Amen? You with me? Amen? It's easy to count the problems. Amen? But we need to count the blessings. All right? And uh, God has blessed us with so much. And I, I'm just overwhelmed with that thought uh, throughout this month and uh, being thankful. Colossians chapter 2 Verses 6 and 7 have, have to talk about that, a little bit to do with that. Um, I want to preach this morning on this subject, abounding with thanksgiving. Abounding with thanksgiving. And like I said, the Bible talks about that here in Colossians chapter 2. And I'm going to take my message just from verses 6 and 7. We will look at some other scripture as we go through uh, this morning. But the Bible says in Colossians Chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. So, so I want you to understand. Therefore, because of the fact that ye have received Jesus Christ as Lord, as your Savior, uh, as, as your Lord and God, you've received Him, so walk ye in Him. So if you've been saved, if you've trusted Christ, you are to walk in Him. Okay, now think, think about that as we go through. Now verse 7 kind of describes that a little bit more. He says, rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith. Boy, I like that. I mean, that's like a good foundation. That's like a good rock that you're built on, established in the faith. I don't know if you got that wind last night. Did you get that wind for about, I don't know, for about a half an hour? My goodness, I felt like my shingles were, you know, standing up, you know what I mean? And my hair was standing up a little bit there when it, uh, we've got a big maple tree. And I said, I love you, maple tree, but don't come visit us tonight. Stay up, or you know what I'm saying? And uh, that, that big wind blew through and I was thankful that, we made it through that. I mean, it sounded like a hurricane for a little bit or a tornado or something. It was really blowing hard at our place. I don't know about your place, but it really was a little bit of a scary thing. I'm glad that our house had a good foundation. Amen. If you don't have a good foundation and a wind comes by like that wind, it's going to blow you over. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, right? And when the winds and the storm come, if you're built on the rock, you'll be able to stand. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith is what the Bible says. As ye have been taught, now he says, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And that's where I get the title of my message, abounding with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Now, Paul is explaining here to believers how to walk in Christ, as I said in verse number six. And this is one aspect of having a proper testimony to others around us. We that are saved and are born again, we need to have a proper testimony. Why is that? Why is that? Because the right kind of testimony to other people will draw people to Christ. And that's what we want to do. I don't really necessarily care much about drawing people to me. You know what I mean? I want to draw them to Christ. 
If I draw people to me, I know this, I'm made out of flesh and blood like you are, I've got human nature, and I will fail you. I'm not perfect. I will fail you. But I know this, if I draw you to Jesus Christ, He will never fail you. Amen. Isn't that great to know? He will never fail you. So he says, abounding with thanksgiving. This word thanksgiving is very simply defined in the word itself. Giving thanks. Amen? Is that simple? That's a deep theological, uh, you know, study that we've had here. You know what thanksgiving is about. It's giving thanks. Simply what it is. Who are you giving thanks to today? If you go out in society, and I've seen... Um, Sometimes on the news, I, I don't remember seeing it this year, but years before I've seen on the news where people will, you know, when it comes to Thanksgiving, they'll go out and they'll interview people and what are you thankful for and, you know, put the mic up to their face and boy, how many people talk about all the things that they're, I'm thankful for my parents, I'm thankful for my country, I'm thankful for this and I'm thankful for that and I'm thankful, thankful I have a job and I'm thankful and they don't thank God. You know what? Number one, first of all, we ought to be thankful to God. Abounding therein with thanksgiving to whom? To God. That ought to be number one among all of us being thankful to God. We can de see displayed today the degradation of our society and what type of world we live in when we hear who and what people are thankful for. We need to be thankful to God for as many blessings. In America today, it seems like the emphasis today is more on beer than it is the Bible. The emphasis today is more on greed instead of God. But my friend, we would not have a country that we can worship God in today if it wasn't for uh, people being thankful to Him for all that He's done for us. God help us to be thankful people. I want to look at several aspects of Thanksgiving with this thought in mind. Number one is Thanksgiving is a prerequisite. Thanksgiving is a prerequisite. How do we walk in Christ? Here's what he's saying here in these verses that I read. He's talking about so walk ye in him and now it's describing how you do that. Well, Thanksgiving is part of walking in Christ, walking and living for Christ every day with a thankful heart rooted and built up in him, as it says in verse number seven, rooted down and built up in the Lord Jesus Christ and then established in the faith. All of this should be done with a thankful heart. I'm thankful to God for all that he's done. And so I want to be rooted and built up in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to be established in the faith. How much do you want to be established in the faith? If you are saved, if you are a Christian, how much do you want to be established? Well, pastor, I really, I'm here today. I want to, well, you came today and that's one of the ways you get established in the faith. But many Christians, uh, you know, they come uh, Sunday morning. I'm glad you're here on Sunday morning, but we also have a Sunday afternoon service where you get more established in the faith. We also have a Wednesday night Bible study. Well, Wednesday night Bible study is a, is a good time. I mean, it, it's kind of, a lot of people, it's their favorite service of the week. In fact, we probably have about 10 or 15 people that come almost every Wednesday night that don't come on Sunday morning. You know, really, if you really want to be established in the faith, then you'll be faithful to every service that you can come to. As long as you're not working or sick or something like that, you're going to be there. That helps you be established in the faith, as the Bible says here, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith with a thankful heart for God giving us a place to come and worship him. There are a lot of Christians around this world today that have no place to go on a Sunday morning to worship the Lord. And if they do go, it's against the law. So they have to sneak over to the place where they uh, hear the preaching of the word. I'm thankful today that we don't have to sneak into church today. That we don't have to meet down in the basement with the, with the windows covered uh, in order for us to have a service and worship our God. I'm thankful for that. 
So we have thankful hearts and we should all be thankful to God. The story is told over in Scotland many years ago, a preacher by the name of Dr. White. Dr. White was known for his prayers of thankfulness. He was just a thankful preacher. And one stormy Sunday uh, with uh, a lot of people absent from the church, one of the members thought his preacher would have nothing to thank God for today. But when Brother White got in the pulpit and began his prayer that morning, he said, we thank you, O God, that it is not always like this kind of weather. Amen. We can be thankful. Thankful for something. We all ought to thank God. Go to Colossians chapter 3. And look at verses 15 through 17. I want you to know that thanksgiving is, is, a, is a duty of ours that the Bible tells us about. Colossians 3, verses 15 through 17. Look what he says. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. Look at this. And be ye thankful. God tells us as instruction to us. Be thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, now pay attention to this, whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So it is our duty to be thankful. We are commanded by God in these scripture, scriptures that we ought to be thankful. Why does God have to tell us to be thankful? Why does he have to instruct? Why does he have to command us to be thankful? Because human nature is full of pride and selfishness. Amen? I mean, how many of you... Remember the times when your mama said, say thank you. Amen? Oh, yeah. I had to get reminded. Amen? Just like Vinny sang about reminders, right? We got to be reminded to be thankful to God for all he's done for us. He has to tell us because we are naturally ungrateful people. Kind of reminds me of the story of the, the mother and the little boy walking down the street. And as they were walking down the street, there was a fruit stand out there. And a guy had a whole bunch of fruit out there and saw this lady. She came up with her little boy and she was looking around at the fruit. And the, the man running the stand, he went over and he grabbed an orange. And he went to the little boy and handed that orange to the little boy. And the mother said, uh, son, son, what do you say to the kind man? And the boy looked up with big eyes and held the orange up and said, Peel it for me, mister. <laughs> Amen. No, what are we supposed to say? I'm thank you, right? And be thankful. God has to command us to be thankful. Do you know this? It's good for you to be thankful. It's healthy. It's healthy for your spirit and for your soul to be thankful. So I challenge you to do something. Do something this week. This is a great week to do it. When you go to prayer, don't pray your regular prayer. Pray a thankful prayer. And all you do in your whole prayer is just thank God. Just start naming things you're thankful for. God, I thank you for this, and I thank you for that, and I thank you. And just start listing the things that you are thankful for. And don't even ask God for anything. Just a prayer of thanksgiving to God. We have to be reminded of that. I want you to notice, secondly here this morning, that Thanksgiving is a privilege. Thanksgiving is a privilege. I know what you're thinking this morning. You're thinking, yeah, it's a great privilege on Thursday when I sat down at the meal and I have turkey and, well, turkey's a little too much money. I have bologna and whatever, <laughs> peanut butter and jelly, you know what I'm saying? No, you sit down at your meal and you have a great big meal and you're thinking, you know, many times, uh, just like Tuesday night, we have pie and praise. Amen. Now, listen, don't think about those things. Think about what the reasons to be thankful. Like I said already, we have a free nation where we can preach the gospel. A place that's so blessed that we are spoiled people. I mean, you could be 
in China where the churches have to meet underground and try to worship the Lord. I heard of a pastor over there that he meets with groups of people at a time. His church can never assemble together in one place. So he has to meet with a family or a f- and a few others here and a family and a few others there. And the question was asked, well, how many members are in your church? How many people total do you meet with? He said, I don't know, but it's over 2,000. But they never can be together in one service. We need to be thankful. Don't be ungrateful. Be thankful. There are places all around our world where it's against the law to have a service like we have right here. And if, if, if people got together to worship God like this, uh, the authorities would come in and break up the meeting. And You cannot assemble. I'm thankful. I, I know we're losing a lot of freedoms, but I think, I'm thankful we could be here today. In this year, 2022, and meet together and worship the Lord our God together. Are you thankful for that this morning? Amen. We are allowed to tell others of our risen, living, soon coming Lord. We still have the privilege of doing that. Now there are, there are places and there are pockets where they try to stop. Well, you can't do that in this neighborhood. Well, wait a minute. I, I was in Alabama one time with a group. I wasn't the pastor of the church. I was just there helping. And we went into a neighborhood and the neighborhood... I don't know what she was, the neighborhood captain. She had some kind of a name or something. And boy, she was throwing a fit because we were in her neighborhood knocking on doors. You can't be here. It's our policy. And I said to the preacher, I'd like to go over there and tell her my policy. Uh, you know, I could just get just throw a fit like she does, right? We're, I, we're in the United States of America, lady. Don't you understand where you live? But the pastor said, no, let's, let's uh, you know, grant her wishes and let's go and let's not cause a problem and all of that kind of thing. And that's fine. I did what the pastor said. But if it had been me, I'd have thrown a fit. You know what I mean? People say, oh, you can't hear. Yes, you can. We found out in the city of North Canton. They tried to stop us and we went and I called and found out, no, they can't stop us. We can still tell people about Jesus Christ. And we ought to be telling people about Jesus Christ. And we ought to be a witness. Why? Because He's the only way. He's the only answer to our problems. It's all found in Him and Jesus Christ. He can meet your needs and solve your problems and put you on a path that's worth living. Many today have little reason to be thankful. But God's people should be thankful no matter what the circumstance. You say the circumstance is bad? Yes. Sometimes it's bad. We have to still be thankful. You know, I find find that those people that we have prayed for in Myanmar under persecution, not allowed to meet together, trying to meet together out in the woods somewhere to have a church service, Pastors that have been shot and killed and and people that have been beaten because they're Christians and in a country like that. And yet they're still thankful for what God has done for them. Hey, you can beat up this body and you can throw it in jail and, and you can starve it and all those things. But I know where I'm going to spend eternity and you can't stop that. Nothing you can do about that. I feel for those today, I think of those today as we meet together, those that are in Ukraine that are going through that war in Ukraine and yet people are still assembling together today for the word of God to be preached. And our missionary Ron Jackson is over there preaching the word and there are other missionaries preaching the word of God, even in hostile places like that around our world. But God is still in control and we ought to be thankful no matter what the circumstance. Here, the Apostle Paul is writing this to us about being thankful and God commanding us to be thankful. And much of his writings were from a prison cell. But he could still be thankful. 
The only ones that have any excuse are those that do not know Christ. What do they have to be thankful for? If you don't know Jesus Christ and you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, what do you have to be thankful for? But here's the good news. You can come to Him and you can be saved. He went to the cross. He shed His blood on that cross and gave up His life and paid the price for our sin. And if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you can receive Him today. You'd be foolish to walk out of this church and out of this door today not knowing Christ as your Savior and where you're going to spend eternity. You can find that out. You can know that today. That's why this church exists. That's why for nearly 60 years now that this church has been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ so that people can be saved. That's what it's all about. That's the most important thing in the world. Knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. I want you to notice something else here. My third point to the message is this. Thanksgiving should be progressive. It should be progressive. Now turn over in your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Let me show you a verse here. Hebrews chapter 13. Look at this verse of scripture. Thanksgiving should be progressive. It should be continuous and progressive. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15. Hebrews 13, 15. Here's what the Bible says. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That's exactly what we have done this morning. You know, <clears throat> we talk about the Old Testament sacrifices, that they're all in the past. But let me tell you something. Even in New Testament times, in the day that we live in today, there is still sacrifice to be given to our God. What have you sacrificed for him? He says here, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Okay? Sacrifice your time and your, talent, your treasure to the Lord. To God continually is what he says here in verse 15. You see this progression? Continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving, what's the next word there? Thanks. Giving thanks to his name. So continually, the Bible says, we offer the sacrifice of praise and the, the, uh, our lips should be giving thanks to his name. Continuous, progressive, being thankful. Listen, for the Christian, everybody, every day ought to be a Thanksgiving day. Amen. I mean, take some time every day and thank God for something, for something God has done for you. And blessed you with. I mean prayer. I know prayer. Many times prayer. We're asking for things. And we're asking on behalf of someone else. Maybe we praying for healing for certain people of our congregation. I'm so glad for healing. Amen. I mean I look over here and I see Janet and I see Nancy. I'm thankful for healing. Amen. Now Nancy still has some evidence of what she tried to attack somebody, I think, or something. Anyways, but you no, know, she fell and broke her nose. I mean, she still got a black eye, amen? And Richie was giving her problems, and she said, I'm going to give you a black eye. But anyhow, I had to calm the fight down this morning. I'm telling you, it was pretty hot out in that lobby this morning. But <laughs> no, we see different ones coming back because God, our God heals. He's a healing God. And so we pray on behalf of someone else that they may be healed. And we pray and we ought to, we, we ask God for things. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong. We should do that. But let's be thankful also as we pray and as we talk to God. You know, it's not just a holiday once a year. It should be all the time. We're thankful. And it should be increasing. Let me ask you, do you have more to be thankful for this year than you had previous years? As you live your life and as you go along, don't you have more to be thankful for? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, how thankful we ought to be. What has God done for you this year? What has he done for you? I know it's kind of funny to say, but I'm glad for bypass surgery. <laughs> I'm still here. Amen. 
God could have taken me out. That's fine. It's up to Him. I'm still thankful to Him, but God has left me here. God knows you still needed a pastor. Amen. And God has left me here. And I mean, in, in so many ways, I feel better. I still have a little ways to go. But thank God for His blessing. Amen. Amen. I, you know, a lot of us have been hit with that virus. But we're still here. Got over it. Keep going on. Keep continuing on. I know there's all the kind of controversy behind the virus and behind the uh, vaccination, all of that kind of stuff. I don't get, I mean, yeah, I get into it. I was going to say I don't get into it, but I kind of do get into it. But uh, bottom line is this. God knows and God is in control. Nobody's going to fool God. God knows what's going on. I often think of this when I think about the coming of the Lord. I think about this. How far is God going to let us go? We've gone a long ways, haven't we? Our world, our society has gone a long ways away from God. How far will God let us go? But I'm glad of this. There are still souls being saved. There's still the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. It's still here. There's still John Romans we need to get out. Amen. There's still people that need to know the truth and need to know the gospel. And that's why God has left us here. So we ought to be thankful to Him for what He has done. I want you to notice lastly here, thanksgiving should be prominent. Thanksgiving should be prominent in the Christian life as a testimony. We ought to have a testimony of thankful people. When we think of all that God has done for us, we should not have to be commanded to thank Him when we think of all that He's done. I mean, here we are, right? God even blesses, listen, even the unsaved world, the wicked world, have reason to be thankful to God. I mean, He still gives all of us air to breathe and water to drink and life. Amen? I mean, and that's all a gift from God. Life is a gift from God. And so we ought to be thankful to Him for all He's done. Somebody said this, a thankful heart is not only the greatest virtue, but the parent of all other virtues. It really is. It is the parent of all other virtues that God has blessed us with. And it all comes because of the fact that God has blessed us and we are thankful for all of those things. God's given some people the talent of singing. Be thankful for that. Be thankful. God's given some the talent uh, of, and, and the gift of, of giving. Be thankful for that. Whatever talent and ability God has given you, be thankful that God has given you some way that you can give back to Him and some way that you can serve Him. God help us. Someone said, O thou whose bounty fills my cup with every blessing meet, I give thee thanks for every drop, the bitter and the sweet. I thank thee for both smiles and frowns, and for the gain and loss. I praise thee for the future crown, and for the present cross. I bless thee for the glad increase, and for the waning joy, and for this strange, this settled peace, which nothing can destroy. Thankful to God for the peace that it gives in our heart, in this world of turmoil, in this world of problems, we that know Christ can have His peace. The Bible says it's a peace which passeth all understanding, but is a peace which He, only He, can give us. We should not only be thankful, but we should be, as the verse I started with, abounding with thanksgiving. You can leave here today thankful that Christ is yours and you belong to Him. If you're here today and you've never been saved, you can trust Him as Lord and Savior today. And when you leave this place, you take Jesus with you. And He's with you everywhere you go. He's a companion right by your side. He's within you and you in Him. 
when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior. God's people today, let us go out from here. Not just this week, but from now on, with more grateful and thankful hearts for all that our God has done for us. 